Hello everyone, Crydex here. Welcome back to our space exploration playthrough. Uh, in our last episode, we got crushed Holmanite uh, shipped to our home planet, and I've gone ahead and finished up the processing for this. Uh, I'll walk you through it real quick. It's nothing too fancy. It's pretty similar to the Cryonite and the um, Vulcanite. You know, you crush it, you wash it. In this case, though, there is this recipe for the Holmium powder. And essentially, it uses these cation exchange beads and a washed holmanite, and it gives you back 50% of each of those. So it really uses half of each of those to create half a holmium powder. But you essentially just need to use, you know, some splitters and priority splitter to use up the output of these guys before you use the new stuff. So that way you're reusing first, and then it just kind of loops in the new stuff when it's needed and then that outputs holmium powder and sand and I'm using the sand and stone to just make some landfill and get rid of it and then the powder turns into ingots at a 10 to 1 ratio and then the ingots go into assemblers to make plates now what's interesting here is the ingots are more dense the ingots stack to 50 and each ingot makes four plates that stack to 100 so 50 ingots which is one stack, is actually worth 200 plates, which is two stacks. So if I really needed to ship a lot of holmium to a planet or orbit, you might think it makes the most sense to just ship the ingots. And you can actually only... Um, where is my delivery cannon? If I go to the delivery cannon, you can only use ingots in delivery cannons, I think. Oh, this doesn't let me select it. I'll just walk over. It's right here. I think in the delivery cannon you can only ship ingots. Yeah, you can't ship holmium plates or beryllium plates or iridium plates or naquium plates. You have to ship 10 ingots or 20 ingots or 50 ingots or 100. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so I may want to have these ingots on hand to be able to ship with delivery cannons. But you can't use productivity in space. So unless I need to ship ingots to space so I can make plates in space. I'll just make the plates here and ship them where I need them to go. Uh, we can also ship uranium-235 with delivery cannon capsules, which I'm sure I will need to do to get nuclear onto other planets because you can't ship nuclear fuel cells. I wonder why. Maybe they're worried they'd explode upon landing. In any case, we have our Holmium plates. And I actually wish I had done beryllium first because I kind of realized Holmium plates don't do much for you straight away. I can make some efficiency module fours, which would be nice to save some power in certain places. And that's about it. I can work on making the conductivity data and the energy science packs that I need for energy science, but everything else you can make is locked behind energy science. So until I'm ready to automate energy science, which I could do now, uh, that is on my list, I can't even really make these things. Um, and Holmium Accumulators, which I really, really want, are locked behind both energy and material catalogs. And material catalogs require, I think, uh, Iridium. Yeah, we need to work on Iridium for this. So we still need Beryllium and Iridium to be automated before we can really jump into the space stuff. The main reason I want Beryllium to be next is because of the cheaper cargo rocket sections, which I've talked about before. You know, 10 plates essentially makes an entirely new bonus cargo rocket section. And 10 beryllium plates is not going to be that expensive, in the, especially compared to these things. And then beryllium also makes... or no, that's iridium. I can't keep all these metals straight. So my heat shielding will get cheaper once we have iridium. You can see we remove a ton of the sulfur, a ton of the stone tablets and then no steel. So heat shielding will be very cheap once I have iridium. And I don't yet know where I'll get iridium. Um, I have made a just a simple Helmod chain for beryllium, and it looks like it's a little better, actually, than holmium in terms, oops, in terms of the power usage, building usage, and output per ore, and we also don't need plastic bars and vulcanite. We need a tiny bit of cryonite um, and a, a small amount of sulfuric acid for beryllium. So I'm trying to decide 
how I'm going to do this one. And then let's just real quick take a glance at what the Iridium chain looks like. Iridium plate. We'll again see what it looks like to automate 10. So these need Vulcanite blocks. These ones use the anion exchange beads, which are made from cryonite and plastic and sulfuric acid and steam. So it's the exact same as the cation exchange beads being made from vulcanite. You can see how vulcanite and cryonite are counterparts in many ways. Uh, let's see, so we need the washed iridite to come from crushed. And then the crushed comes from the ore. And then if we put productivity modules and everything, we get down to exactly the same, almost, ratios. We still need 10.91 beads, which is exactly what the Holmium needed. You can see the chain looks almost exactly the same. Uh, with the biggest difference being that we also need Vulcanite in the ingot stage, whereas we didn't need anything for the Holmium ingots. And then we replace these Vulcanite blocks with Cryonite. So Iridium is a little bit more expensive overall using Vulcanite and Cryonite, but still going to be a lot cheaper to have, you know, what is it? One Iridium plate for heat shielding compared to, you know, 10 iron and 16 stone tablets, which is four stone bricks, which is eight stone ore. And then a sulfur, seven sulfur is what we're replacing. So we're saving quite a few things with one iridium plate. So I'm excited for iridium as well. And once we get our cargo rocket sections all made cheaper, then we can be less concerned about the price of cargo rockets and sending them all over the place. I do need another shipment of Holmenite, I think is what it's called. Yeah. So... We've got a decent amount of plates ready to go here. We've got about 4,000, but that's not a ton in the long run. But I think I will look at beryllium. I did do some investigating, and it looks like our best bet is going to be collecting from this asteroid belt here, because it has beryl as its main resource. And I did some looking around. It's interesting, asteroid belts only scan left and right, because they're a belt. And there's this patch right here, which I think is what we use because this is 160 million barrels. So I don't think I'll ever run out of this barrel ore. Um, I will need to collect this as ore because I can't use any productivity modules in space. Thankfully, the power requirements will be quite small. And so I'll just put as many miners as I can here and we'll need to load it into some sort of cargo rocket and launch that back down to Navi. So I think that's what I'm going to do first in this episode. And then maybe I'll wait on Iridium for a while and work towards some of the other space sciences first. I think I can at least get a couple other things done without Iridium. So let's first, though, I'm not going to need a ton of accumulators because accumulators are really only needed on planets. Because once you're in space, you don't need the the stored energy. And I would like to get regular solar panels, but how, how many am I really gonna need here? So let's, that's for iridium. So for beryllium, we need to look at the ore mining recipe. And then if I put efficiency ones in these, two each, then we're only going to need 1.2 megawatts. Which is like, not very many solar panels at all. 50 of these is 3 megawatts, if it could produce fully. And I believe, too many buttons here, uh, here we go. I believe that 172 means they actually produce 172% on average, even accounting for the fact that it's always twilight. And so that means each of these solar panels will produce somewhere in the realm of 100 kilowatts each constantly. So I could just take 20. So 
My stack of 50 should be more than enough. I'll take 100 just in case. And then I will take a few accumulators just in case we have some sort of power surge, but I don't really know how necessary that is. And then we will want to take some efficiency one modules. We'll get from down here. I already have a bunch left over, so maybe I don't need two more stacks here. I already got four stacks, which is plenty. I should get rid of that sand. Definitely don't need it. Should get rid of this scrap. Next time I go up to the space station, I need to get rid of my astronomic science stuff. I don't know how I ended up with that, and I don't need these cargo rocket section payloads. So I am going to need to take some space scaffolding. I think a thousand should be plenty because we're not going to need a large section. And then we need to craft both a landing pad and a rocket silo. Okay, so we need a bunch of things for that. We need more electric engines. We need more of the... What do I need from over here? Steel. We need concrete and some processing units. Problem is I'm out of inventory space. Don't need a recycling facility. Don't need two pipes. I don't really want to get rid of anything else. Guess I don't need these two fuel refineries and solid rocket fuel. Okay. Did I get enough? Yes. Now I just need one stack of blue chips and that should do it. Okay, so we've got that, and now we need to do the same thing again. More concrete, more steel for the landing pad. I should consider having these automated. Instead of grabbing the resources all by myself every time. Okay, cargo landing pad. That should do it. And then we'll need some sort of combinator. And we'll need to take fuel with us. It's always tough. I wish you could have it tell you how much fuel you'll need to get back, because that's not something I know how to calculate. But if I do go to the Calidus... Oh, wait. I... Oh, okay. I can scroll. I was like, where's my asteroid belt? Here it is. It's going to take 77,000 fuel to get there. I mean, if Kerbal Space Program is any indication of how space works, it should be way cheaper to get back, I think, because we're already in space and a lot of fuel is used to get off the planet. We have the full 100 sections that I need along with an extra capsule. So I should be able to launch a second rocket back well, I guess the first 100 will go to launching the first rocket back. So if I wanted to have enough to launch a second rocket back, I would put another 100. The problem is I recover a lot if I land in a landing pad. So I think I'll just launch this way the first time. Although, if it's in the inventory, I won't lose it. So never mind. I could just add another 100 in here, and that would give me enough for two launches back. Maybe I'll do that. I'm not sure. So we have miners, panels, efficiency modules. I need some more belts. I think 300 might be close to enough because I'm not going to be going very far, but just in case. And then we will want to have fuel. Okay, belts right here. Take 400 extra. Oh, right. These are not the belts that I want. Good thing I thought about that. I want space belts because regular belts are not going to work. So I will need a few more stacks of space belts. 
and I have the other space things I might need. And I have space pipes if I need them, which I will for the rocket fuel. So we'll use unbarreling, and in this case, I'll just bring up the classic 50,000 rocket fuel. We'll take all these off, and we'll say rocket fuel liquid barrel. So let's see, two, that's 100, 1,000, 10,000. So 50,000 is 1,000 barrels. And we'll turn that on. And we don't quite have a thousand barrels stored. I should maybe do another fighter chest, but this works pretty quickly. And we store a hundred thousand rocket fuel in these barrels. because I want to make sure I have enough fuel for the return trip home. We do have a space assembler for unbarreling, and I will want to take a roboport with some robots to do the, the legwork there. We'll take four stacks of those, one stack of these. And that should do it. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need. Do I need water for any reason? I don't think so. I'm just mining. Let's make sure we don't need a... Yeah, just mining time 400%. So it's very long mining time. But other than that, I think it's just normal ore. We'll turn this off. And I think we're ready to launch. I've got all the things I need. I mean, we could go for it. I'll bring the other 100 parts, though. That sounds like a good idea. So we'll say less than 300. Because I'm actually anticipating the fuel that I need is going to be a very small amount. So maybe that 50,000 fuel will be enough to, to send two rockets back. And we're bringing an extra capsule anyway. So. This should be 20. This is all a bit too slow. Hundred seventy. We're getting there. Oh, and then I'll want to take a warehouse to put the ore into. And then the thing I always forget is nanobot construction. But what we are going to do is take care of a problem we've been dealing with forever, which is crafting nanobots by hand. So this will be repair packs. And then this will be nanobots. This will be iron sticks. So we've already got the iron. And we will put these in a chest up to two stacks. I don't know how it's taken me this long to do. I should have done this absolutely forever ago. There we go. How fast is this going? 0.6 per second? That's plenty. And then we'll put this in our logistics request. I'll actually do 200, because sometimes I run out with just 100. We'll make sure to have some backups in the inventory. And that should finally help with the nanobot problem that I always experience. I, I finally got the requester chest and provider chest figured out. You'd think I'd get nanobots figured out. And then I'll re-up my life support. I have 80 left, but... You know, we can just get rid of our... Or it looks like I already got rid of my used canisters, but... Make sure we have two full stacks of life support. And I think we're good to go. 
I should probably make some form of checklist for going to places to establish mining outposts because I feel like every time I go I have forgotten something in some fashion. But we've got power and power network. We've got bots and bot network. We've got the belts and miners and modules. We've got the cargo rocket silo so we can send a rocket back. We've got the cargo landing pad so we can send more rockets there. We've got the drills. I mean, I think we're good. And fuel, which we're taking with us. So, we're going to call this good. I'm going to change this back to 200. And then we are going to go ahead and fly there. So we'll do a save real quick. And then I will launch. Of course, I didn't fuel up, so we'll have to wait a minute. I always forget about that. We have enough fuel, right? Yeah, we've got 60,000. I feel as if I should maybe let this build up to be a bit more. Because if I need to do a couple cargo launches at the same time, it's, it's possible that 100,000 is not going to be enough for me. But this should be plenty. Okay, we're almost there. Sixty three thousand. And I don't know if we'll be able to fit sixty miners. It's possible that once I get space beacons, the wide area beacons, I may want to go beacon some of my mining. In this case, I won't need productivity, that's for sure, because 150 million should be plenty, but I may use beacons for speed. Because the patch is only so big. Okay, so we're all done pumping fuel in. So now we can hop in, go to the asteroid belt, general vicinity, cargo safety is 97%, so I'll lose a little bit of fuel, but I don't think I lose anything that only stacks to one, so we'll keep all of our cargo rocket parts and just hope that we have enough fuel to get back. We can always reload it. That's the first thing we'll do, is see how much fuel it takes to get back. Here we go. Crash landing as usual, and my bots try to collect everything. Let me turn that off. And then, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. I want to transport everything, so I'll just have to come back for it. For now, I'll jetpack and fly over. I'm thankful for these jetpacks. I maybe should have a few more. I can't remember what I need for thruster suit too. Because it has more space. I need material catalogs and iridium. So we're still a little ways away from that. So the it's interesting on asteroid belts, the size and richness is turned up very, very high. But a lot of the ore fields are cut off. You know, you can see, like over here, there's an ore field that was cut off. So that's why they're so high. The size and richness here, frequency size and richness is all crazy high, is because there's only so much space. There's also this stuff called methane ice, which at some point we may want to use. Methane ice turns into, you can deliver it in stacks of 200, and it turns into 10 methane gas. So you can deliver 2,000 methane gas. And methane gas looks like it's used to make nutrient gel, which shows up in a lot of the uh, biological science chain. And then it's also used 
in combination with bio sludge, which really you're only spending 10 bio sludge because you can decontaminate this 10, so you get 90 back. And so methane gas is one to one equivalent to oil. And then we have oil in space and we can process that oil in space. Though of course we don't get productivity bonuses if we process in space, we still can process it. And here's my mining field, which I will put some scaffold near. We don't really need it on the asteroid part. So let's do this. I hope I've made, I've made some assumptions here that I can build directly on there. I can't. Okay, that's good. So we just need some space off to the side here where we can put a silo. That should be enough for a warehouse. We'll put the ore into this right here. We will put our launch silo. Where did it go? Right next to it. Let's see how much fuel we need to get home. We need 32k. Unfortunately, I didn't bring enough for two launches of that, but we do have enough at least. We will unbarrel directly in for maximum empty liquid rocket fuel barrel. We'll do a requester and a provider. I may end up wanting to recycle the barrels into steel. Put one of these, we will get some power connected. And then I'll just use this asteroid for solar power because we shouldn't need a whole lot. Okay, let's just copy this. Go back to our construction bots. It's taking five megawatts. Oh, I guess the robo port charging up it takes a lot of power. But once it's charged, it won't use very much. Yeah, so that right there is 8.5 megawatts of production. That was easy. And I don't need any accumulators. So I will just craft some chests here, put down all my stuff. And then fly back. I just realized I don't have any rocket fuel or uranium fuel cells, so if my jetpacks run out of power, then I will be unable to use my jetpack. But the thruster suit will still at least let me slowly move around in space. In fact, I wonder if I go faster. Not using jetpack. It's actually about the same, looks like. Let's see. Okay, I'm way over to the left here. And unfortunately, I may need to make two trips. I don't know if I can fit everything in my inventory. So what we'll do is we will leave the rocket parts. I want all the fuel. We'll put as much as we can into one or two of these pods. I can't fit everything. I really should have packed these rocket parts. I didn't, I, I thought about it. I was like, oh, maybe I, maybe I should pack these rocket parts because then they stack to five. But I didn't really consider why that would be helpful so I was like I have plenty of room in the rocket but it would be helpful because then I could take all of this in one trip though I should fill up my inventory at least so we'll have to take one more trip back to get the cargo rocket parts but that's fine because I only need 100 cargo rocket parts to go back home anyway because I didn't bring enough fuel 
So every time I launch to here, I need to bring the 33,000 fuel with me. Because I don't have any way of creating fuel here in space. So I could use the methane ice, I guess, but I don't have bio sludge, so that doesn't seem worth it. Okay, so we're back. We can use our chests here to dump a bunch of stuff. Let's see, we need the logistics bots in the network. And then, but the problem is I don't have the resources I need to craft things. So we need some provider warehouse action. Maybe I should have more steel with me. Oh, that's what I didn't bring. I didn't bring a delivery cannon chest. We will make that right now. That's something I should always bring. And we will unload directly into this. Oh no, I want to unload the landing pad into this. So maybe... I need a little bit more scaffolding. We'll put this here. Okay, so that will unload into a provider warehouse. We can put all of our fuel into said provider warehouse. I need to get rid of my inventory first. There we go. And we have some rocket parts, which I can also put in some provider chests. So we've got all that set up, now we need to set up our miners. I'm going to try to use scaffolding to flatten out. It's kind of annoying, you can place scaffolds on the asteroid itself, which is a waste of scaffolding. I'm wondering if this messes with my miner placement. No, it seems to work, just like normal. So that actually does help. We'll shrink this down to make it a little easier. But we just want to accentuate all the places that the ore is so we don't have any issues building our miners. Okay, that should do it for there. Okay, so now we just need to get our miners placed. We'll just start here. We'll do our classic medium pole and space belt. Oh, I should put in the modules. Copy that. And let's see how much we got. That's 11.5, which is enough. At least for now. This guy's going to be a little bit in the way. 
I guess we can go up. Looks like I brought just enough scaffolding. Okay, we want a splitter to combine these, combine those. And then we have more ore available if we need it. Can't build mini loaders in space. Interesting. I did not know that. So we can just place two inserters, it should be plenty. And then we will have these guys insert. And honestly, I'm just gonna let it fill up. We do want a requester chest here for cargo rocket sections. And I'll need to go grab those. And then we will want a requester for the capsule. And we need to wire those. So let's see, this guy only inserts if the cargo rocket section is less than 100. This guy only inserts if the capsule is less than 1. That should do it there. These guys need power. Our miners need power. And there we go, beryllium. We're using barely any of our power. I will plop down a few accumulators just in case. Who knows, maybe we'll have a reason to need some extra power once in a while. But generally, if you are using too much power, you're not going to fix everything with just a few accumulators. They're only there for power spikes. Okay, so our beryllium is now being ored. And barrel ore stacks to 100. Did I make a mistake with holmium and be less efficient there? Holmium ore stacks to 50. Holmonite ore. So I think I did not make a mistake. So beryllium ore stacks to 100. Ulmanite ore only stacks to 50. Iridium ore only stacks to 40. And naquitite only stacks to 10. It's interesting the stacks of ore are not all the same. But I am glad I discovered that. Because that would have been a rude awakening. I wonder what about cryonite ore... That's 50, and Vulcanite ore is 50. Okay, so weirdly enough, this ore only, out of all the different ores, is actually best shipped in its ore form rather than its... Um, well, I mean, it might be just as good to ship the ingots, but it's definitely not better to crush it first, like it was for the other ones. And now I need to go fetch the other cargo rocket sections, so we'll do that. And then we can work on beryllium smelting back on the home planet. Hopefully I have enough fuel in my jetpacks to get there. I need to grab a couple more nuclear fuel cells when I get back home. And I need to place this delivery cannon chest. Just in case we need to launch some resources up. And I'll leave a few inserters, chests, and assemblers behind. That just allows you to do kind of whatever you need to do from space using the Navigation satellite uplink thing. Oh, I did. Gosh dang it. I did the thing. I forgot. Okay, well, let's use logistics storage. 32, 60, 21. How much inventory space do I even have? We can use our logistics storage as a way to store a few extra things for now. I 
And these are just the Helmod Smart Tool things, which can be deleted. Okay. So we've got a few extra spots out of that. Still don't have enough. I meant to dump everything out of my inventory first. At least we get to fly pretty fast. And then now that I have the cargo rocket pad, I can trim this surface so it'll delete all these extra chunks that I don't need to look at. And I believe that reduces the saving and loading times. Because I think save and load times get longer as there are more chunks explored or something like that. Okay, let's try this again. I'm going to put all my stuff in some chests. And this time I'm only going to bring back the stuff. And I guess I'll take one life support. Don't want to run out of life support. I guess I don't really need the jetpack. You can I think I'm going just as fast as if I had the jetpack right now. It's a nice, peaceful spacewalk. You can see... Oh, dang it. That'll slow me down. You can see my guy actually does walk while in space. Or walk very, very slowly while using the jetpack. Okay, here we go. I still don't know if I'll have enough for all of them. I did. Sweet. Okay, and the rest of this is just scrap. So. Now, what I'm curious about is, if I don't mine that, will it... I wonder what this 43% in the bottom left is. Do you think that's life support? Or is that jetpack? Looks like it's still going down even when I'm not using the jetpack, so I think that's life support. In any case, I wonder if the trim surface is going to work because of that wreckage. It might think that that's something, you know, that's been placed there by the player and it won't delete it. So it won't delete all the chunks, but we'll see. Okay, so we need to get rid of all of our sections here. Pick up all our old stuff. Get rid of those. And then we need to place all the bots. I'll place another roboport just in case asteroid problems destroy something. We need the capsule in here. We need the other one in here. We need the delivery chest. Unloading into the warehouse. And we need some storage because of the fuel problems. Of course, now they're taking all my extra logistics things, which I didn't necessarily want to get rid of. They can keep, they can keep all that stuff. That's fine. Oh, I never actually created the request here. Request 400. There we go. That's what I expected to see. And now we're almost all fueled up, and we've got 5,000 beryllium ore all ready to send home. Since I have the miners, I may as well copy this design here. No reason not to. I don't know if I have quite this many, but I've got close. Yeah, I'm short a few. We're getting 14 beryllium per second. And with productivity modules used everywhere, that will get us about 14 beryllium plates per second in the long run. Once we get to module fours, I'm curious, instead of 10.6, we would need 
only 7.75 so only about 78 I don't know 75 percent as much 80 percent because what was it 10.7 so that cuts our cost to about 80 percent in terms of ore that's a pretty significant difference but those module fours are expensive Well, let's see, it reduced the ore usage by 3, because it was 7.7, .7, right? So that goes from about 11 to about 8, which is a very significant reduction. I kind of just want to launch this now to get beryllium going. But I think uh, what I will do is maybe just let the game run for a few minutes so we can take back a little bit more ore with us, and then I will resume... The recording once we have a little bit more than 6,000. So I'll be back in a minute. Alright, welcome back. So we have about 10,000 ore and I think that's all we're gonna use on this launch though we could transport up to 50,000 if we really wanted to. So let's go ahead and launch home. I did think for a second that I could maybe use the space capsule to go home, but that only takes you to the closest planet. So it would not take me to the planet I want in this case because I'm here. So it would take me to this planet, I believe, or that one. Definitely wouldn't take me here. So. It's so sad. There's an entire planet that just has a lot of iron ore. You know, it's like, I, why not one of the special resources? We've got plenty of iron. We could get more Holmanite on that planet, more Erudite on this planet. Which is probably where we'll go for it, because we have zero threat there. So that's probably where we'll go next to get Iridium. But for now, let's fly home. We want to go to the landing pad. And I think... Yeah, we don't... I left a bunch of random items in the provider chest so we can have the robots uh, do things as needed. Remotely. But for now, I believe we are all set to go. I'll do another save. And then we'll launch. Okay, a safe landing it looks like. That's good. Any landing you can walk away from is a good landing. That's what they say anyway. And we will need to start unloading this beryllium. And we will need to go through this whole process to smelt it into plates. So I will need three pulverizers which we need to turn our logistics requests back on. I had to turn those off because I was trying to give things to the network that I didn't have enough of in the first place. So the bots kept giving me back what I had tried to put in. So we'll need to wait for some deliveries here. And then we should be able to craft some pulverizers. I think I'm going to up my steel request to 600. I find that I keep running short on steel when I craft things in space. I think it's because so much steel gets used for these warehouses, but I think I'd like to have some more steel on hand. Okay, we can craft one pulverizer, two, three. Chemical plants, we're going to need four. I guess I could use this handy button. 14 total, so... I'll just make 15. We already have the furnaces and we already have the assemblers. Make some more chests because I've run out here. But that should do it. And then everything else we can just craft as we go. There's still a lot of bots that want to deliver things to me though. So I'll give them a minute. And then I wanted to grab some more jetpack fuel. Yeah, they can catch up with me someday. Okay, we get our jetpack fuel from here. We'll grab two. I wish you could see... Can you see? I don't think you can. It doesn't show you how much fuel they're using. 
Just that it works. I wish there was some sort of fuel readout that would be helpful. And then I have some extra cargo pods that I want to drop off here, because I don't need them. I think you only get cargo pods when the cargo rocket, cargo rocket crashes, aka you're not landing it on a landing pad. Because when you land it on a landing pad, you get back the cargo rocket parts, which is a lot better. Okay, so we need to give ourselves some space. I might craft it over here to the left. So we will unload with a filter mini loader the barrel ore, which is here. And we'll just go alongside our other lines here. I'll go out into empty space near our methane ice. We will need sulfuric acid, which we already have, and cryonite rods, which we can easily just have delivered with the logistics network because it's a very small need. 0 0.0, so one tenth of a rod gives me 10 plates. So for every one rod, we get 100 plates. I'm not going to need them very often. So we can begin with our build. So let's Attach this. I wonder, I almost have half a mind to copy paste my Vulcanite design because this is very similar, but it should go pretty quick to just make it from scratch if I use the Helmod Smart tool. So we'll do this, we get three. I'll have the barrel come in on one side of the belt and I'll put the output on the other side. I think I've been making these builds probably bigger than they need to be because I've been just putting them outside and it, it kind of looks neat, but we'll just save some space here. So we'll put it on that side of the belt, the close side for this one. It's the far side. Get a couple substations going. Get another RoboPort. Copy all the crushers and there we go. We've got crushed barrel and for crushed barrel we want only four which I will put right here and then we'll put the beacon like so connect up the sulfuric acid and we'll connect it up to here sulfuric acid and we need to load in that one needs to grab diagonally as well as this one I maybe should make them drop farther so they don't go as slow and then we have water as an output now it's interesting we actually net some water on this whole process. So what I may do, we'll have to have a water network and then we'll have a chemical, where are you at, chemical plant? We'll have a chemical plant that will turn the excess water into steam, maybe right here. And then that will be turned into power. I'll just use a classic boiler to make power out of it. And then that way our excess water will disappear over time. And then of course we're making sand, so we'll do the same thing we did before, where we make, we'll do something like this, output left, sand, we'll make landfill out of the sand. Landfill active provider. Place that in, and there we go. Okay. So then we've got that checked off, and now we need three more chemical plants. Which I'll actually put down here. One, 
two, three. Oh, interesting. If you click the Helmod Smart Tool over it, it doesn't actually have the modules in it. I wonder why that is. Okay, so we need some more water here. And the water doesn't get output till the next step, which is a bit annoying. So that's the only output. We're not done with that yet. And then we need cryonite rods. Do something like that. And then we need to put cryonite rods from a requester chest onto that side of the belt. I think requesting 100 will be more than enough. That should do it. We'll go underground here so we can get the water out because we'll want to connect that water to this water. Like so. So they're all part of the same water network. And since we end up netting water, I shouldn't even have to create a water pump because this one turns sulfuric acid into water initially. So the pump has been primed, so to speak, and we should just be able to put an overflow. Let me actually do this now. Change this to steam if I can find it. Oh, this makes water from steam. I need an electric boiler. That's right to make steam out of water. It's the wrong wrong thing. Okay, so we'll do this, and then we need an overflow valve right here, and then we need just your classic steam engine. We'll place it right there. And that should do it. So we'll turn all the excess water into steam, and we use enough power that it should drain that pretty quickly, I would imagine. Okay, so we've got our beryllium hydroxide going at up to 20 per second, which is about right. Oh, I was supposed to have four of these. I missed the memo somewhere on that. Whoops. Okay, we need the water and this attached. This goes one farther, and there we go. Yeah, 3.3 .3 is not... Three is not enough. Okay, and then we need six for this next one. So we'll put this off to the side. We only have a single liquid input, so we should be able to put these pretty close. Like this. Connect up those, and that will make that all work. And then we'll connect the water up. And then we'll connect that water to this water, which this is kind of in the way. We can always move a substation, that's easy. And now the water loop should be fully self-sufficient, and we'll end up having too much over time. The fluid system content should keep getting higher and higher, which is what we're seeing currently. And then the output of beryllium powder, we can put, I maybe should have left room on the inside for that, but we'll just put it on belts here. I've got infinite space, right? What's the hurt in using it? Okay, so beryllium hydroxide is complete, and that gets smelted by nine industrial furnaces, which I think this is nine. So we are just going to copy-paste this bad boy. And put it right next to all this. Maybe like so. We'll leave three squares, just in case I need some space later. connect up our robot networks. It 
change the recipe to beryllium ingots. And our beryllium powder comes all the way down to here. It goes underground. And there we go. And we should see the bots carrying the productivity modules soon. I hope so. And then we need 13 assembling machine threes to create all of the correct things there. And I think this is... Yeah, this is 16, but we'll just, we'll copy this. You can never have too many. And then we'll have it start, we'll have it go sideways actually, like this. And then the output is here. For these guys, the input is on this side of the belt, like that. And they have the wrong recipe, we need a brilliant plate. Alright, brilliant plates, complete. Amazing. We'll have these come down alongside the Holmium. Seems fitting. We'll put them there. Alright, let's make sure everything's running smoothly. Looks like we're far shorter on ingots than we should be. We seem to have made some sort of mistake on all of this. Let's just try collecting some. Does that fix it? Oh, right. The input is... On, wait, it is on the left. Not really sure. Somehow a bunch of the powder got on this belt to the right here. Because it should only be the ingots on the right side there. Yeah. Okay. And then we have a lot of ingots that we should place by hand. And we have some sulfite to put away. And that should do it. Looks like we've ground to a halt here. I'm out of sulfuric acid. That's because I disconnected it, of course. And that should fix it. Okay, so we're turning crushed barrel into beryllium sulfate. We're using the beryllium sulfate and cryonite to make beryllium hydroxide. These don't have water connected. Okay, that's just because we don't have enough water yet. We will. We will. You are not outputting. Looks like all of these are running. We should end up with excess water. I still believe we were reading that correctly. So these guys will start running here soon. Yeah. Because the output is more water than we put in. Which seems reasonable, given we're using sulfuric acid and we're using cryonite. But yeah, all these furnaces are running and we got our assemblers going. Looks like, wait, I saw another powder just now. I've made a mistake here. Powder is going on this left one. Oh, that's so interesting. Wait, no, I still don't understand. How did a powder... Powder should not be getting on this chain. How is that happening? Because these should only be having inputs from the furnaces.
Maybe it was just left over from earlier. We'll see if it fixes itself. And now what? We just don't have enough water. We're up to 515, though. This should, this should end up running smoothly eventually. I think it's just a slowdown because we don't quite have enough water to prime the pump. So, ah, uh, what the heck. I kind of wanted to see it work, its, work itself out, but we'll, we'll give ourselves a little bit of jump start water here, a few thousand, so that these can all start running. Because really, this is the slowdown right now. I'll have to keep a lookout here to see if more powder somehow gets on this line. I, I still have no idea how that would happen. Maybe somehow something's taking from this line and putting it over here, but that shouldn't be happening. I think all of these inserters are important. I guess this, oh, there it is. This inserter is trying to put it into this furnace, which is not here, so it's placing it on this square, and then it's being grabbed by this inserter. So I need to fix that over on my Holmium line, because that could happen over here as well. And it probably has happened. So this inserter is the bad one, and this one. And I need to grab all of this. Yeah, there we go. That's so interesting. Okay, well glad I caught that. And now that should all run properly, we'll get rid of the rest of our beryllium powder. And wow, look at that. These space metals I'm collecting from alien planets are being processed. That's a cool feeling. So now we can finally use beryllium in all of its applications. Biggest one being cargo rocket sections. I can go change that right now. And then we'll use them for more astronomic science and cheaper blank observation frames. Essentially, oh, go back. Essentially, instead of a steel, we use a beryllium and get twice as many. So we use half as much glass, coal, and oil, and we don't use any iron, instead using a single beryllium plate. So we'll get more of those, and what else do we get? We get these arrow frame things, which I can't use yet, and all sorts of other stuff that I can't use yet, and thermal radiators, which I actually can build now. I can, these are twice as fast. And they actually use the same amount of power, so they're twice as efficient as well. Not that the power usage is high, but I do need 500 astronomic science, which we're nowhere near having that much. We'll need a few more, a few more cargo rocket launches before that. But first, I am going to upgrade these cargo rocket part crafting buildings with the new recipe. Ten beryllium plates. And now they have six inputs, so we need the brilliant plates right here. Altogether, they can use at most one per second. I'm trying to decide if I want to bring it in on a belt or use bots. Ah, it's right here. I'll use a belt. I'll actually use a priority. We'll just do half and half for now. We'll bring it down. And then we'll go over to here. And then we'll want to come down and over. Just switch the sides of the belts that those are all on. And now we need to place all of those rocket fuel tanks. Hmm. It's a little annoying. I'll just drop them manually, I guess. Oops. No! We dropped a few on the wrong side.
Yeah, this is not the most efficient way to do this. Because now I can't even get rid of all of them. Okay. And I picked up a lot of cargo pods, which is unfortunate. For the same reason. I guess I can just keep putting them in this last crafter. Let's see, we're already inundated. Shoot. Okay, well, what I can also do is get rid of them by putting them into the crafting buildings. So we'll go with that. Okay, so now we have more efficient cargo rocket sections. There's really no reason these need to be efficiency module 3s. I'm going to put something like that to make them craft a little faster and take less power. So that's great. So now for the low, low price of 500 brilliant plates, we can use half as many of all the other resources. So that will make cargo rocket launches much cheaper. Looking forward to that. And we can check beryllium off of our checklist. And I will want to take lots of beryllium with me to space. So let's go ahead. We still have some space left in our rocket. Let's go look at our orbital combinator, which I'm going to need another one soon. And we will request brilliant plates. And I think I'm going to call it an episode there at negative 2000. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.